Hey everybody, this is Dr. Joe Boria with this week's Health Kick, and today we're going to talk about something uh, controversial, another topic that's controversial, and that's aspirin. Oh my God, aspirin. I've been constantly asked about it. Is it good? Is it bad for you? Listen, let's look at what aspirin is for a second. Aspirin primarily is a chemical, it's a salicylate, uh, that uh, acts as primarily a non steroidal anti-inflammatory. It prevents inflammation or controls inflammation in the body. So, there's so much research and so many studies on aspirin on whether or not it's good for all these things. Does it decrease cancer? Does it decrease strokes? So many times I see about decreasing heart attack and, and so forth. And then there's other studies out there that show the opposite. And here's the reality of aspirin. We have to look at aspirin as being something that is outside the body. It's that exogenous is the scientific term. What the heck does that mean? That means you're taking something outside the body and putting it in. So, let me look at my body for a second. I've got a pancreas, I've got a spleen, got a liver, got a gallbladder, got my appendix. I still have all of my organs, by the way. Uh, you know what? I don't have an organ in there to make aspirin. You know, so we, we're kind of brought up in this logic that people now in my office as patients, they put down, well, I take a multivitamin, I take this, I take that, and I take aspirin. They put it down as a supplement. Aspirin is toxic. Bottom line, end story, aspirin is toxic. At any level, it's toxic. Aspirin's not good for you. Here's the problem. When you read medicine and you read some of the research on it, what you'll read is risk-benefit. That's the, that's the little disclaimer. You know, there's a risk to take an aspirin, and it does show some benefits. But when I look at the research, listen, aspirin hasn't been shown to decrease non-fatal heart attacks. Aspirin has never been shown, you ready for this, in any study that's ever been done to decrease a non-fatal heart attack. So it's been shown in some studies to decrease heart attack, but never non-fatal. Okay, number one. Number two, it's been shown in many studies to increase stroke. Uh, why is that? Well, my blood is a certain thickness. Aspirin basically causes what? My blood to be thinner. My body says, hey, that's not normal. I need to thicken it back up. So guess what happens? I end up having sections of my blood that are a little thicker than they're supposed to be, I get a stroke. So it can increase the rate of stroke. But when I start to look at the side effects of it, a large study came out in 2003 that evaluated 87,000 nurses and showed that there was a significant increase in pancreatic cancer in those nurses taking two aspirin a week. Two aspirin a week. Many people are told to take one to two aspirin per day. So it increases pancreatic cancer. It causes liver damage. It causes kidney failure. It causes another uh, study came out showing that it increases esophageal reflux, which in turn causes what? Esophageal Barrett's esophagitis, which can lead to bit esophageal cancer. Thins my blood, causes hypertension. By taking aspirin and having thinner blood, raises my blood pressure. Causes tinnitus, ringing in the ears. I mean, it's, there's uh, studies that show that non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are, are related to the number of uh, miscarriages in, in our country. So, you know, we've got this idea that aspirin's good for us. Listen, if you're in a major episode of stroke, if you're having some major episodes of, of, a, of a heart attack, myocardial infarction, you know, and somebody pops a couple aspirin in you because you are in absolute crisis, absolutely in those events, aspirin has been shown to, to show some benefit if you're having a stroke or a heart attack right at that particular moment, are there risks to it? Yes, but the benefits outweigh the risks in that short, acute moment. But the idea that taking an aspirin every day is good for you is absurd. It is not accurate, it is not true, and when you start to really read the risk benefits, it has not been shown at all to be beneficial. Now the one study that showed that, the large study that showed that it decreased the rate of non-fatal heart attacks in 48% of men, that's true, but the patients were also given magnesium. <laughs> they don't talk about that. Magnesium was totally ignored in the whole research and all they talked about was the aspirin. Now, magnesium for years has been shown to be extremely beneficial, increasing blood flow to the heart and to the brain. So magnesium has a lot of benefits. It's also been shown in, to prevent clotting and clot, um, plaquing 
uh, in the in the arterial walls. So magnesium has had a lot of benefits, but the aspirin on it all, on its own in a study has never been shown on its own to decrease those problems. In fact, like I said, the long-term use of aspirin, taking aspirin long-term, what does that mean? Aspirin therapy. When you hear those terms, aspirin therapy, aspirin has never been shown to be good or healthy for you. So please, I beg of you, look at your organs. If you don't have an organ that makes something, it's not good for you to put it in your body. It's not good for you. Look at your lifestyle, for God's sake. We're worried about taking an aspirin, but nobody has a problem pounding down wings and drinking soda and, and, and high fruit, uh, corn syrup, fructose corn syrup every day and putting artificial colors and artificial flavors and pesticides and herbicides. You want to look at why you're sick. That's one of the reasons why you're sick. Not from whether or not you're taking enough aspirin. Heart disease isn't the result of somebody not taking aspirin or God forgetting to put some organ in your body to make aspirin. Heart disease is the result of your lifestyle. High stress, high processed foods, poor nervous system, you are guaranteed to develop some cancer and some heart disease. Listen, I understand when I talk to people, hey doc, you're going to die from something. I'll be the first one to admit that. Totally understand that. But hey, I don't want to die at 60 years old. I mean, my gallbladder was on, wasn't only designed to last 32, 38 years. My heart wasn't only designed to last 50 years, 40 years. I mean, these things are failing and, pl and clotting and, and becoming extremely sick and extremely diseased by how we treat our body. That is the bottom line and the story. So what do we need to do? We need to pump some good nutrition in your body. Eat a, eat a living food every meal. If you're not going to quit smoking and eating donuts and so forth, you know what? Okay, we'll help pump some healthy nutrition in you. Put an apple, put a banana, put an orange, put something good in your body with every meal, a salad. You know, have that with your cigarette or your donut or whatever if that's what you're going to do. Okay, number one. Number two, you got to move. So if your job requires you to sit down all day, you're going to have to get up and move a half hour, an hour every day. It doesn't have to be going to the gym. Just go for a walk. Use the stairs rather than the elevator or escalator. Park as far as you can from the building and walk up. Just simple, stupid little things like that make an enormous difference. you got to drink a lot of water. I mean, it's vitally important for you to drink a lot of water. It allows your body to flush itself. Um, less processed foods. If you see that man made it, you can't recognize it from the tree or the ground, don't eat a lot of that. I know we want to have that once in a while. I'm guilty of having that myself once in a while, but you can't make it a, a main staple in your diet. We talked about positive thoughts. you got to think good thoughts. You have to be more positive in your thinking. You're going to track that in your life, certainly, but you're also going to track health by thinking more happy, healthy, good thoughts as opposed to negative thoughts. We talk about the nervous system. Your brain sends messages down out to your body. Those messages go back up. We know through science now that by keeping the health, the nervous system healthy, it lowers blood pressure better than medication. Do you realize that? I can take two prescription drugs and about 89 to 90 plus percent of people that have a misalignment in the upper part of their neck, if they get that corrected by the chiropractor, their blood pressure drops better than the drugs. Phenomenal. It also lowers the stress response of the body controls the cortical steroids. If the, if the uh, spine's out of alignment in certain areas, it'll cause your body to release more stress hormones. And on and on and on. So listen, aspirin, good for you or bad for you? Bad for you. What would be my exception? If you're having a stroke or a heart attack right in that moment, I say fine. Other than that, I'm dead set against aspirin therapy. Aspirin's toxic. It's poisonous. It's not good for you. It's not supposed to be in you. Don't take it. That's my opinion. What do I know? Hey guys, this has been Dr. Joe Borio with this week's Health Kick. Remember, eat well, exercise, drink a lot of water, get a good night's sleep. And remember, you, your mother, your father, your grandfather, your uncle, everyone you know needs to be under regular chiropractic care. That means to make sure the messages get from here to here better and allows the body to work just like nature intended. Guys, have a great week. Look forward to talking to you next week.